Hey everyone, welcome to Women Entanglement. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Women Entanglement Christian Podcast. It's Friday. We're feeling good. God is good. And we are happy to join you all tonight. Yes, Lord. We got some good in store for tonight. For those of you who are just joining or just uh, watching us for the first time, my name is B. And I'm Kay. <laughs> and we are the co host and host of Women Entanglement, um, a Christian podcast, as I said it before, um, and where we just really dive into the first uh, series of this uh, podcast, just us diving into the Bible. Um, from beginning to end and, and pulling out some of the famous uh, iconic women of the Bible um, and mm -hmm. their entanglement, their situations that had them all tied up and tangled up and confused yes. and mm -hmm. uh, being used by God and used um, to paint, paint a story. Um, and so what we do is that we go each each week, each Friday, we pull out a, a famous famous woman out of the Bible and we dive into her story um, and we give you all firsthand um, us going through it and we actually go through it and we live through it. So what God does for us is that he, uh, in the process of us studying um, and meditating on the word that we, he kind of uh, puts us in the shoes of these women. Um, and, it, and, it, and it pans out pretty good because it makes for a good conversation because we're transparent um, about everything. Uh, so e even if we can't relate, during the week leading up, God begins to show and reveal to us how we identify with that, whoever we're uh, dealing with that week. And it placed us in a such a humble place, in such a, 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 mm -hmm. a place of recognizing and appreciating these women for what they've done and their stories that they told. Um, so we just welcome you guys tonight. We welcome you guys. We have a good story, a good um, entanglement to discuss tonight. Um, yes. We're just going to pick up what we left off last week. Kay blessed us, um, and she told us about the entanglement of uh, Samson, Samson's mother. Um, and I'll let her go ahead and give us a you know, background and build us up to what we're going to be talking about tonight. Hey everyone. Hey everyone. Once again, I am Kay and um, we just want to say thank you all for joining you guys. Welcome to our first time viewers. We are on Spotify. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook. Uh, just, uh, just some additional platforms that we are on you guys. Uh, but great intro B. Thank you so much for that opening. Um, on last week, for those who may not have been with us, we had such an awesome time in the Lord, you guys. And we talked about the entanglements yes. of Samson's mom. You know, Samson um, killed, what was it? A, was it a thousand men with a donkey's jaw? A thousand men. A thousand. A thousand? <laughs> a thousand men. You know, Samson with the dreadlocks. Do you know Samson? Y'all right. know Samson. Um, and so we, we, we kind of jumped off talking about the birth of Samson and we were talking mm -hmm. about the, the entanglement, um, that his mom pretty much was in being barren, uh, being advised by mm -hmm. the angel of the Lord that she was going to conceive and bear a child. And she was given very, mm -hmm. very specific instructions on what she needed to do to be able to properly train this child up to be this awesome man yeah. of God in which God had intended for him to be okay and so she got you know we we saw a few entanglements and that one entanglement was just her being barren and being given a prophecy and uh just the 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 shift we pretty much just talked about pretty much the shift and so mm -hmm. and, and patience what else did we kind of hit on we hit a, it was so much you guys last it week was so, it was so much it was so yeah. much um what we what we did talk about is kind of how we kind of related to to her um as as being um uh carrying care uh, being told because you if you remember um when the angel when the angel of god came to her and told her that um you know she would be she would be uh, producing a child 
he gave her some stipulations on yes. basically um basically he, he let her know that this particular seed that she would be carrying this child that she would be carrying um mm-hmm. is basically of him and he should be clean from top to bottom so he gave her a little checklist of what not to eat you know basically what not to drink what not yes. to, you know basically we partake in because he wanted this particular um this particular ruler that she would be raising up to be clean to, mm-hmm. to be clean and so we related we, we kind of talked about you know how um important it is for us you know what we what we um intake and how we carry ourselves and when, when we are carrying something of god and so it was yeah. it was deep it was good yeah, but you, you if you if you didn't watch it Go back to our page and watch it. It was really good. It, it will really bless you. Um, yeah. us just recapping it does not serve it justice at, at all. Um, yeah. So uh, it was an awesome, awesome, awesome word. The Holy Spirit showed up and gave us some great revelation um, in that. And it, is, and it was a blessing. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so it you guys, just, which, what were you saying, B? Oh, okay. I thought you said something. So we'll be in Judges 14 and 15 also, I believe. Um, The author of Judges is Samuel, just a little bit of biblical background. Um, The time frame that this story took place was in 1075 BC, okay? Around about 1075 Mm -hmm. BC. And the entanglement topic for tonight is the Mm -hmm. entanglement of a weeping wife. The entanglements of a weeping wife. Okay, you guys? We're about to go ahead and jump into it. Um, let's go ahead and start in prayer. We have to make sure we usher in the Holy Spirit in prayer. Um, you want me to? You want to pray? You want me to pray? What you want to do, B? Um, you can pray, and then I'll pray out. Okay, cool, B. All right, let's go to the throne of grace and mercy, Heavenly Father. We come to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you, God. We thank you, Father God, for being the keeper of our souls, God. We thank you, yes. Father God, for having the perfect time, and Father God, we thank you, Father God, for allowing us to. Uh, come on this line, Father God, and give your word to your women, God. We first off just want to thank you for trusting us, Father God. Trusting us, Father God, with such a delicate flower, Father God, and allowing us, Father God, to be helped to um, allowing those flowers to bloom, God. So we just thank you so much, God. We thank you for the trust that you have within us, God. So Lord God, um, we just ask right now, God, that you set the foundation, Father God, We ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that your Holy Spirit comes through, God, because it's not us, Lord. Let the women not see B and K, God, but let the women see your spirit in which uses B and K, Father God. We are only vessels, God, and there is absolutely nothing that we can do, Father God, nothing that we can say, Father God, nothing that we can even think, Father God, Father God, without your spirit, God. So we ask, Father God, that you give us revelation. We we ask that you give us interpretation, God. We ask that you give us understanding, God. We ask that you give us um, everything that we need, Father God, to be able to deliver this word, Father God, in a way that will make you smile, Father God. We love you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. Burn like fire and blow like the wind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for that wonderful prayer case. So we're going to pick up and Judges 14 and 15. We're going to um, we're going to do a little bit of 15, um, enough to get us to the end of this uh, woman's um, entanglement. But we're going to start in Judges 14, um, beginning in verse 1. And in Judges uh, 14, leading up, um, it kind of skips the whole part of, of Samson growing up. It's kind of not listed. Um, I know that last week we spoke about, um, you know, his mother being pregnant with him. Um, and then it's kind of like this week, uh, we're speaking about um, uh, him being married. And you're, you're probably kind of like, uh, what happened, you know, with this childhood? <laughs> with this childhood, but we're going to mm-hmm. pick up in Judges 14. And so um, we're going to start at verse one. So we're going to go ahead and read, and then we're going to, what we do, we just read along, and then we're going to go back and, you know, build you guys up, let you guys know what's going on so you can understand, and it's going to be awesome. Okay, so let's start in verse. What version are you in, 
Um, I think I am in the NIV. Okay, version. cool. Baby. Um, okay. Hang okay. on a second. Hang on one second. Okay. Okay. It says, and Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I've seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said to him, is there, ne is there never a woman among the daughters of of thy brethren or among all of thy people that they that they that thou get that the, oh my god hold on a second thou i'm on the wrong version hold on one minute okay um, one second. i was thinking i'm like that's that's different from the nrv yeah that's the wrong that's the wrong hold on it's that's the wrong version hold on y'all hold on she's she's getting the like, nrv hold on just a second y'all Hold on one minute, okay. Okay. I hope you guys have had an awesome, awesome week. Um, my week has been great. Um, I thank God for it, you guys. We made it to Friday, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. These kids were out of school for spring break. Uh, I pray that you guys had a restful week um, and that the children, because, you know, they're kids, but kids need rest, too. So even the children need a break. So I'm happy that they were actually able to be out um, for this week, because, you know, can you imagine not being able to take vacation at work? So that's what school is for them. They go in and they work their shifts um and they need they need a they need a breather too sometimes and so i'm so happy that the children were able to um get out of school and just relax and you know stay up a little later and sleep in late and and, and for the most part most kids <laughs> were able to relax i know mine's relaxed um he still had the little program to go to but for the most part he he, he, he had a great uh week and we'll try to find something fun to do tomorrow on Saturday. So yeah, just give me y'all a little chit chat. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll be back shortly. Thank y'all for y'all patience. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. Yes. The woman of the sorry, hour. Sorry guys. <laughs> sorry guys. Um, I have like a house full of boys. Yes. And um, <laughs> they got a little bit too silent for me, you know. Oh, yes. So I had to go check on them. <laughs> had yeah. to go check on them downstairs, and make sure everything, the house is not upside down. Got gotcha. you. Exactly. But, but we're in the NIV. I think the one I was reading before was King James, and it was throwing me off because that's not my normal um <laughs> go to. Yeah. But we're in, I'm in the NIV now. Okay. Now, now it looks better. It looks better. <laughs> so we're going to start at Judges. <laughs> we're going to start at Judges 14, verse 1. Okay. It says, Samson went down to Timnah and saw there, saw there a young Philistine woman. When he, okay, when he returned, he said to his mother and his father, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me to be my wife. His father and his mother replied, isn't there an acceptable woman amongst our relatives or amongst your people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. Verse 14, his parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines for at that time, they were ruling over Israel. Verse 5, Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother, and they approached the vineyards. 
of Timnah. Suddenly, a young lion came, roaring towards them. The spirit of the Lord came upon him in power, so that he tore the lion apart with his tore the lion apart with his bare hand, and as he might have torn a young goat. But he but he told neither his mother nor his father what he had done. Verse seven. Then then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Sometime later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. Mm -hmm. It was a swarm of bees and some honey. Verse nine, which he scooped out, which he, which he scooped out with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they, but but he didn't tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Verse 10, now his father went down to see the woman, and Samson made a feast there. Okay, this is as the customary for the bridegroom. We're going to stop right there real quick, and then we're going to go, go we're going to, I'm going to kind of bring you back to, to that point, but I want to just make sure you understand everything up until the end. So verse, uh, verse one opens up, sorry y'all, something in my eye. Verse one opens up, um, and it says, it's Tamson, Samson goes to Timnah. And I'm assuming uh, Timna is just a, a local city. He goes to the Timna and he saw a Philistine woman. Mind you, Samson is not Philistine. He's not Philistine. And so, but he when he saw this Philistine woman, he liked her. He liked what he saw. And so he told his mother and his father, you know, I, I want her. I want her to be my wife. So in verse, uh, in verse three, you see where his mother and his father is telling him, like, you can't. You can't find anybody else like that's from your that's from your tribe that's from you know your lineage. You got to go outside of it. You got to you know like somebody that's outside of the tribe. They're basically just trying to convince him to basically choose and marry within his tribe. And so he wouldn't hear it. You know he wanted her, and so he was basically telling them like, no, I want her. So we go down um, to verse four. And this is this is kind of when we was reading this case, this this kind of stood out to us. It said the parents did not know that this was from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So basically saying that the, the parents didn't know, although they was arguing the fact of Samson um potentially liking and trying to marry a Philistine woman, the parents didn't know that basically all of this was a setup by God, mm -hmm. as, as verse four says. It says his parents did not know that this was from the Lord, who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. For at that time, they were ruler ruling over Israel. And as we go back to uh, the last chapter, we um, we are aware that when the angel of the Lord came to basically to Samson's mother, she told her that basically he would um, uh, basically bring victory to mm -hmm. Israel. So basically what, what that particular verse is saying is that him seeing the Philistine woman, him wanting to or basically having a desire to want her, to marry her, um, to connect with her, um, was basically something that um something that God set up. Mm -hmm. You know, for him to kind of have that inside um inside position to the Philistines, you know, to basically, to, or to ultimately make his move is what I'm, what I'm, what I'm thinking. So we go down to uh, verse seven, and it says, then they, then they went down and talked with the woman, and he, then he went down and talked to the woman, and he liked her. It says, uh, verse eight, sometime later when he went back, so this is the second time, so sometime mm -hmm. later when he went back to marry her, he turned aside and looked, and it was a lion. So basically, the second time he goes to Timnah, him and his mother and father, uh, they're, they're approached by a lion. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm assuming in this, by reading this, when the parents saw the lion, they ran. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they didn't see him tear the lion apart yeah. <laughs> in that moment. So they had to have ran, which, which I understand. If I saw a lion, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't be, here to tell y'all I saw the lion because I would try to run too. 
<laughs> but <laughs> but yeah. I'm assuming they ran. But what he did, because Samson was so powerful, but his mm-hmm. power was not from his own strength. It was from God. His power was from God. And that's why, you know, the angel of the Lord told his mother previously what he could not eat and could not do because his strength would be so powerful because he was so clean and he was so Mm. pure. So um, he was very powerful, but his power was given to him by God. So it basically tells us in that verse verse that he tears the lion apart, Mm -hmm. like rips rips the lion apart by his mouth. Now you know that had to be some strength. You know that had to be some strength for him to take his bare hands and rip the lion apart by the mouth. That was a strong, that was a strong brother. So he ripped the he ripped the line <laughs> apart. Um and <laughs> did you have anything on that case? But that was like that's what he did. He ripped them apart. Well, I just I just kind of want to just kind of because <laughs> that that's some that's some pretty deep stuff when you think about that. Deep. I mean, <laughs> have y'all it, it's something I'm thinking about. Have y'all ever had <laughs> tried to detangle something? You know, mm. even if it's like weave, I mean, if it's like, come on, we're all women. So anybody ever had like that right. ponytail or something that wasn't fully human? It was like, had that right. yes. or something. Yes. Or just whatever the case may be, trying to separate something and you're pulling it so hard, trying to get a knot out of something, just whatever it is. And you're pulling it so hard that you start getting like them little lines right here in your head. Like you be like, oh, I'm putting pressure. <laughs> Like, I, I, right. I'm just seeing that. Right. Even if you're trying to rip apart some material or something for for a purpose. Like, yeah, that's the whole lion's mouth. And then let's not forget that lions have teeth. So, yeah, I mean, in half, in half. Mm, so they so how much power, which we already know God is powerful, but oh. It just shows me how much power we can possess if only we allow God the, the, the access to be able to fully use us the way he intends to. You know, mm, so you see, my God may not want to use you, you know, to be a, 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 a bodybuilder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was, it was just that it was a spiritual strength that Samson had. And that spiritual strength, right. it, it seeped out into the physical and it caused him to be powerful. Right. But it all started yes. from within. And it was his spirit yes. that had so much power. So that just shows me that if only we allow God to have full access to when I'm talking to myself, the way that he intends yeah. to, the way that he wants to, we can be so powerful. You know, his word tells yeah. us that we can tell a mountain to move. I mean, like, yes. it's just so much power. Speak to it. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, so the big tree, right? He spoke, he cursed the fig tree, told it to die, right? And not produce. That just shows me how powerful, how powerful. Mm. If only we entangle ourselves with God. Yeah, that's good. God. That's so good. That's that's, that's so good. That really is good because Samson had a a next level type strength, but I feel that Mm. it was only, and you never hear about anybody else having that type of strength in the Bible that I'm aware of. You yeah. know, because he was so connected to God. His strength was on a whole other level. But after after he tore this lion's mouth, <laughs> tore this lion apart, uh, <laughs> he went on about his business and he didn't even tell his family he had did anything like that. But they, mm-hmm. they visited him not again. Um, when they visited him not again, and um, he basically went to to see, see the, um, the lady. They, they never named this wife. Um, this is his first wife. They as you will notice, they didn't give her a name at all. Um, mm-hmm. They just said the, the Philistine woman. So they never gave her a name. But after he ripped the lion's mouth apart, mm-hmm. um, he goes on by his business like, ne- I like hey, nothing happened, you know. And, <laughs> and uh, for the, uh, they take another trip. And this trip they take, um, so sometimes later when he went back to marry the woman, he turned aside and looked at the lion's carcass and there was a swarm of bees and some honey. So he, at the second trip when he's going back 
to basically, um, I'm assuming they're arranging the marriage at that point um, of this Philistine woman. He then goes and visit the battleground of where he slayed the lion. And he sees that the lion, in the lion's carcass, there's honey, there are bees, but there's honey. And so what does he do? He sticks his hand in the carcass and he gets him some honey. And he keep on, he keep on walking. But then he he meets his parents, and he not only he just get, he gives them some too. They don't ask no questions. He don't tell, he don't tell nothing what happened. And that was so strange to me because they ain't asking him where did honey come from, where you been, like what what happened. They don't ask no questions at all, and he don't say nothing. He don't reveal anything. So we're picking up B in verse ten. B, let me let me see because that's so good right there, B. Because I I, I, I had I had a quick question for you, but I wanted to say this too. What, what what really stood out to me about that that just that what you when you were talking, it was just kind of hitting me like a bus. It's just a blessings after the battle, you know. Mm. You see what you see that? Can you see that? That's that, good. That, that's good. That's that good. That's that. good. You know what I'm saying? God ripped, you know, with that's the strength good. of God, he was able to win that battle. But even after he won that battle, there was a blessing. There was a blessing. So mm. that battle that you're fighting to, you know, to get your finances back, it's blessings behind that win. That battle that you're fighting, you know, um, through a sickness, Ooh. it's blessings behind that win. You know, it, yeah. it's just a and, and what's so amazing about God is God will even cause your enemies to bless you. The blessing yeah. is, in, is produced from the, like it, it's produced yeah. from God. He sends it through the enemy just yeah. to show you. Just to show you so the relationship that you were in with that guy. And you don't know why in the world did he just send me a blessing? Or why, why in the world did he just why? do this? Why, when I was trying to get the divorce, it happened so easily. He didn't ask for nothing. He didn't try to take me right. to court. Like God will cause your enemies to bless you. And sometimes mm, the that's blessings, so good. He would use your enemies and send the blessings right through your enemies. So it, that's just Ooh, so that's awesome. good. That is good. Gosh, that's that was so all, good. That's oh, go ahead, B. No, I'm 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 waiting on you because that's good. That's some good stuff right there. I was gonna ask that's you good. because that's, I, that's good. Yeah, I didn't want us to skip over it, but I was gonna ask you, B. Why do you think Samson did not tell his parents? Mm. Like anything just hit you? Um, I I think kind of what, what just really hit me was that um. Although he knew, um, what, what really just hit me was the situation where um, it's probably off, off um, two separate stories. But what hit me was that the 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 wedding, the wedding that Jesus was at with Mary. That that I don't even know what he's gonna go with that, but that that that's what hit me. And when he told her that his hour hadn't came yet, not that not that Mary didn't know. Who, who she carried and what he was able and capable to do because the angels that came to her told her who he would be, what he would do, you know, so she knew that he would, that who he, what she was carrying and what he was going to be able to do. But for, for Jesus at the wedding, you know, he didn't want to perform that first miracle or be known or be uh, revealed at that time of being that the savior because he probably felt like he had some more growing and proving or whatever to do. And so I think what, what God gave, just gave me that was I feel like Samson, you know how somebody don't really know their own strength mm. and they don't want to introduce somebody to a version of them that they don't know that they're able to maintain. Oh, oh. And so I don't, I don't know where that came from right there. But oh. but but I think that that's 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 kind of I don't even know where that came from for real. Oh. But that's kind of what you know I just got like I don't think I think he he was basically kind of scared of his own strength, mm. and he didn't he didn't want to reveal to them or show them what he had the potential to do mm. because he didn't want anybody to fear him to that capacity. Because he knew, you know, he knew that he had some work he had to do when he had some people he had to, you know, take out 
but he didn't want them to fear him. He wanted to fit in mm-hmm. enough to where he can go ahead and marry this woman, get in, you know what I'm saying, and then do what he's called to do. So I think he kind of was thinking like, you know, I don't want to reveal nothing because I don't even know. You What's know how going? you step out on something too fast? You'd be like, oh, I wish I would have, you know, perfected this a little bit more. I wish I would have, you know, got this little, yeah. you're stepping out so fast and you don't even know what you're capable of. You're just stepping out. And so I think that's, I think that's kind of what, you know, why he didn't tell them. That's good, B. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That was good. I just wanted to add to that because I knew you had some good. Yeah. I, <laughs> I look, I didn't know I had that. I don't even know where that came from. But that, yeah, I, I just think he didn't, he, he, he didn't want to put himself out there because it, it probably scared him because if you realize <laughs> that this is his first, it's his first interaction with his power. Yeah. With his strength. Mm-hmm. This is first interaction. And you know what I'm saying? It's like you know how you get that adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush when something is about to happen, and you and you do something or whatever, and then it's like after after it happened or after you do whatever mm-hmm. or whatever, and you like you 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 scared to go on a roller coaster, but then you go, you get this rush, and let me go ahead and do it, and once the roller coaster is over with, you like, oh, mm-hmm. I did it. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know how I did it, but I I did it, and so I think in that moment it kind of scared him. Yes. It kind of scared him. And he was like, you know, that's why he just left. He didn't tell nobody. He didn't tell nobody. Ain't nobody seen nothing. Like, I'm not finna, <laughs> I'm about to keep going. Yes. But that yes. was good. I, I think that that's kind of, kind, I think that's kind of what it is. It could be something else, but I just think that he didn't, it was, it was kind of shocking for him too. He yeah. didn't want to yeah. reveal himself when he didn't know what he was carrying fully. Yeah. So where are we? We're Okay, so we're, we're back on uh, what 10. It says, now the father went down to see, now his father went down to see the woman and Samson made a feast there and as the customary, as the customary for bridegrooms. When he appeared, he was given 30 companions. And I don't know, okay, who's thinking about this? Was it was the companions, the, the, the groomsmen or the, the, was it the wedding party? But it was, he was given 30, 30 companions. And so he begins to tell them, let me tell you a riddle. And, he, and the riddle says, if you can, he says, if you can give me the answer within the seven days of this feast, because the feast lasted seven days. He said, if you can give me the answer to his riddle within the seven days of this feast, feast, I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. Verse 13, if you can't tell me the answer, you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. Tell us, and they told him, tell us your riddle. They said, let's hear it. So he replied, out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. That's the riddle. It says for three days, they could not give the answer. Verse 15, on the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, cope your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or you will be burned, or you, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to rob us? Verse 16, says, then, Samson, then Samson's wife threw herself on him sobbing. You hate me. You, you, you don't really love me. You, you've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. Samson replied, I haven't explained the, I haven't explained it to my mother or my father, he replied. So why should I explain it to you? Verse 17, she cried the entire seven days of the feast. Mm-hmm. So on the seventh day, he gave, he, he finally, he finally told her because she pressed, continued to press him. She in return explained the riddle to her people. Verse 17. Let's go back up real quick. So basically, um, the father comes down. Did you have some cash real quick? Oh, girl, girl, I'm good. I'm... <laughs> it's just a lot. So no, I thought you had, I thought something, so something had hit you real quick. You know how I do. Okay, so, <laughs> so um, the father goes down 
And at this time, they're preparing for the wedding. At this time, the wedding has happened. So they're, they're, their, their custom, it lasts a full seven days. Like it's a seven-day feast in preparation for the marriage. Um, and so they come down, and Samson is, gift, is gifted. I'm assuming that it's custom that they give them um, basically a group of people, entourage is, is what I'm, you know, what they said, the companions, an uh, entourage. And so they give them these people to help them celebrate. And it's 30, 30 people, they say, around 30 people. And I want to just skip. Okay, around 30 people. And so it says that um, he, he begins to tell them uh, a riddle. And as I was researching, that's what they do. <laughs> that's the that's one of their customers too. When they're in the process of the Marian feast and they're getting together, riddles are told. And, oh, and you know, they they make they make different wages of you know if you know the answer, what you get if you know the answer. That's custom for this this that day and time, and you know with with um Samson's mm -hmm. lineage. That's what they do. So um, Samson did this riddle, and the riddle was pretty pretty simple. But basically, he told them if you if you you have basically seven days, but if you can get this riddle, if you can get the answer to this riddle, then I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. So okay, well, me and you were talking about this a little earlier. You know, I was thinking like that's not a lot, but to think, but when we broke it down. You know, we discovered that back then their clothes and what what that was all they had, mm -hmm. and 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 their clothes meant a lot to them. Their garments meant a lot to them, and you know they were they weren't ones that wore a different garment every single day. They had special garments. Some garments, you know, they just wore um you know week long, and then some garments they just had where they wore on special occasions, but he, he set the standard by telling these people, okay, I will give you 30 linen garments or, and 30 sets of clothes if you figure out the answer, but if you don't figure out the answer within 30, within uh, the seven days, then you owe me the 30 linen garments or the 30 sets and, and 30 sets of clothes. So, it says three days go by mm. and no one can figure out the riddle. Three days going by. Nobody can figure out the riddle. So on the on the fourth day, it got real. It got <laughs> real real now. And they approached Samson's wife. Mm. And they got her, they got her hemmed up. I can I can kind of, you know, mentally individually, they got her hemmed up against the wall, then it surrounded her, you know, like look. Mm. We don't know the answer to this riddle. <laughs> we don't know the answer to this riddle. Your husband is tripping. Dang. And we need the answer because we ain't got 30 nothing to give him. We ain't got 30 nothing to give your husband. So you need to figure out what the answer is and tell us. Or if you don't figure out what the answer is, and if you don't tell us, then we're going to kill, not just kill. They ain't just say kill. They said, mm. we're going to set fire. We're going to burn, burn up. You and your father's house. Not just you, but you and, you and your father's house. If no, you sorry. don't tell us this riddle. So it's serious at this point. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was serious the first time I was reading over. But when I, <laughs> when I read over it a couple more times, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it's got, it, it ain't got real. Real quick. Yeah. Yes. It didn't got real, real quick at this wedding. It didn't got real, real quick. Mm -hmm. And so the wife, what did she do? Because at this point, my hu not just my husband, my husband has got me in a situation with this real mess. And now these people finna come out and all get the answer. They gonna kill not me, not just me, my me and my family. So what did she do? And it, what I would have been doing too, when she went to her husband and she said, tell me, tell me what the answer is. I tell me the riddle. Tell me the riddle's answer. She didn't tell him that she wanted to know the answer to tell the people. 
mm-hmm. you know, she just knew that her back was against the wall at that moment and that she needed to know the answer to save her, not just her life, but her father's and her family's life too. So she, she began to cry. She began to basically, I'm envisioning she, you know, at his feet begging, like, please tell me the answer to this, to this thing. Like, please tell me. And so, you know, after a while, it says that he got tired of her basically weeping because it says she was crying a whole seven days. She just was crying. She was crying. And so I'm assuming as a husband, he got tired of her crying. And so he went ahead and gave her the answer. Mm-hmm. He gave her the answer to the riddle. Okay, did you have anything on that case? I feel something come on. It just shows me just how powerful women are. You know, here we are, we're dealing with yeah. a very mighty, mighty man. You know what I'm saying? He's a very mm, powerful yeah. man. He just ripped this lion's jaw, like ripped this lion in hell by his mouth. And his wife still broke him down, you know, like broke him down to be able to, yeah. you, know, you know, even if it was out of aggravation or, you know, out yeah. of sorrow or whatever it was, at the end of right. the day, she still got the answer. So she still... You know, she got in there and broke him down. And so it just shows me just women in general, you know, how powerful we are. I think that she more so kind of attacked his emotions. Um, I don't think mm-hmm. it was nothing like he was fearful of her or anything. It was the emotions. Right, she right. Part of him, you know, and, and, and I just want to say. Yeah. <clears throat> what is that? What is that? Ble- it's, it's in uh, the Be- Beatitudes. It says, blessed is um, those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And, yeah. it just, and, 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 and just to be able to relate that, what does that mean? That means that God wants us to cry out for him. And I know I'm kind of going a whole mm. different way for that, but I'm seeing a woman whose back is against the wall and she's crying out to her husband. You know, yeah. We, of course, we didn't really expect her to cry out to God because she was a, a Philistine woman, and they worship what? Right, 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 right. And so it, it's not, right. you know, you know, it's not a surprise to us that she didn't cry out to God. Um, right. But I just, I just think that it's so worth mentioning that this is the posture that God wants us, His children, to be in, because His Word tells yeah. us, you know, blessed are those who who mourn for they shall be comforted. I think in that verse, people think that that mourning is like um, crying because of, you know, a loss of a loved Mm -hmm. one. But God is saying, no, I want you to cry out to me. So cry out to me. Right. And it's not that God wants to be sad. It's just that, you know, it's different. And we've been in praise and worship before. We've been in prayer before. And you come out of prayer and you got that snotty, you blowing snot bubbles, you know, like that type of mourn. That's what God loves. That ugly, ugly cry. The same thing that happened with Samson, it pulled on the heart of Samson. So even though Mm. Samson didn't try to ignore it, he couldn't ignore it because she mourned because she pulled on his Mm. heart. And I can just almost imagine God wanting us to be that same way for him. It's not that he wants us to be in a sad place. It's just that- Right. When you, everybody, (laughs) we've all had that that one heartbreak where you cry and it's like nothing comes out, but you're like- (laughs) (laughs) You know, that that's a- Level, right, right. You be, you be so hurt. You, you, everything hurt. You can't even get that out because everything hurt. It's like when you cry from your soul. You know, like your your soul. Yeah. You just cry. Like it's not. It's nothing that the body. It's from. It's from inside. And I just yeah. wanted to mention that the beatitudes. I think if I'm not mistaken, that's in the Sermon on the Mount. I think that's Matthew five. But I'll, I'll Matthew. double check. I think it's Matthew five, now. but yeah, yeah, I, that's I just, so that's so that's so good. That's that's good because you because then even in that you see that he cared about her. He had feelings for his wife. It wasn't just an arranged marriage to where okay, I don't care nothing about you. You know, he it's, that showed you that she had a connection to his heart. Yeah, you know, he it don't say if he was madly in love with her. But it showed that in that moment, okay, 
because you are hurt, because I see that you're hurt, I'm going to do whatever I can do to kind of ease that pain. And if, ease, and if giving you the answer to this riddle is going to ease your pain, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. You know, because I, because I feel for you. I, I have, I feel your pain. I don't want you to cry, you know, okay. so I'm going to give you this, this, this answer. That, and, and that's so, it. That's, um, it. Yeah, that's God. Right. That's everything you just said, that's God. You're in my face. You're crying out to me. I hear you. Let me go ahead and give you this blessing that you're crying out to me for. Let me go ahead and Ooh, give girl. that you're begging me to help. You. Let me go ahead and uh, remove this, this stress that you're begging me to remove. You know? Yes. Oh, God. That was mm, good. That's so good. Amen. That's so good. That's so Amen. good. Verse 16, it says, then Samson's wife, we're going to go back, we're going to go back and keep going. It says, then verse 16, says, then Samson's wife threw himself, threw herself on him, sobbing. You hate me. You don't really love me. You, you've given my people a riddle, but you mm. haven't told me the answer. And he says, I haven't even explained it to my mother or father. Uh, so why should I explain it to you? Verse 17, she cried a whole, the whole seven days of the feast. Um, so on the seventh day, he finally told her because she continued to press him, to press him. She in return told the riddle, the answer basically to um, her people. Verse 18, before the sun set on the seventh day, the men of the town said to him, what is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than, than, than a lion? Samson said to them, if you had not plowed with my helper, you mm. would have not, you would have not saw my riddle basically if you would have never pressed my wife if you yes. would have never you know ran up on her and hemmed her up you know and put <laughs> her in this awkward position wow. then, you know put her back against the wall if you would never yes. put my wife back against the wall and you know made her so in dire need to get this answer then you would never got the answer so that's basically what he's saying, you know, that if you read it, you would kind of get lost with that plow, plow my hair for because you'd be like, is he cussing? Like, what is he saying? But, you know, that's what I got from me. <laughs> that's what I got from me. He basically telling them, if y'all would have never did what y'all did to my wife, y'all would have never um, pressured her in that way and, um, you know, intimidated her in that way, then you guys would have never got the answer. Um, verse 19 says, then the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. He went down to help me, Kay. Ashkelon. Mm -hmm. At Ashkelon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Went down to Ashkelon, struck down 30 of their men, stripped them of their belongings, and gave their clothes to those who had, who, who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he went up to his father's house. Verse 20, and Samson's wife was given to a friend who had attended him at the wedding. So, um, <laughs> mm. so basically, after, <laughs> so after they explained the riddle, they got the answer. So that, what, that, what does that mean? They, they got the answer. He told them if they get the answer within seven days, then, you know, then he will owe them the 30 garments and the 30 um, sets of clothes. So although they got it in a, you know, in a conniving way, they brought him the answer. So what, what he had to do, he had to go get the third, because he, he didn't have it on him. So he had to go get the linen and the clothes. So what mm -hmm. does he do? He goes out to a city called Ash Ashkelon, and he said that he struck down 30 of their men. So he killed 30 men to get mm -hmm. their clothes, 30 men, 30 garments. And it says that um, he gave their clothes to, and then he brought the clothes back, and he gave them, basically, he brought the clothes back, and he paid his debt. That's what mm -hmm. he's saying in verse 19, that he paid his debt. And at the end of verse 19, it's saying that, it says that he was so upset. Basically, he was upset the fact that, I'm assuming that he, they tricked him out of the answer. They finessed his wife. I'd have given him the answer that he had to go kill these people to pay back the debt. So he he's so angry at that point. At the end of mm -hmm. verse 19, it says that he went up to his father's house. And so remind you, he was married at that point. So them saying that he went up to his father's house, that means that he left the wife yeah. and he went to his father's house. 
But it doesn't tell us how long he stayed at his father's house. It just says that he went. Verse yeah. 20 says, and Samson's wife was given to a friend who mm. had offended and who had attended him at the wedding. So now this, this is where it gets deep. I know you're gonna have something to say about this case. This is where it gets <laughs> deep at. So as I told you before, in the in the in the verse before, it tells us that he was so angry that he went to his father's house. So he left his wife left her we don't know for how long but in verse 20 it said that his wife was given to basically one of the companions that attended the wedding so that means that his wife was now given to another man to marry mm -hmm. so that led me to believe as we were talking okay he had to be gone for a while he had to be gone for a while. It doesn't actually say how long he was gone, but yeah. I, I'm just thinking he had to be gone for a, a while for them to um, give for for the for the dad of the group, the dad of the bride to give her away to somebody else, knowing that she had just married uh, Mary Simpson. Did you have anything on that, Kay? Before I start in verse 15, and we're not going to do it in the entire verse 15. We're going to do up until. Um, where we need to be to, to to end this entanglement with with his wife. Well, I, I was just going to say <clears throat> that it's just so important. Help me, God. It's so important that, well, we know, of course, but it's so important that we make sure that we are serious about mm -hmm. marriage before we get married. And what yeah. what do I mean by that? That when she made when she took the well, I don't know exactly what the philistine vows are or anything or if or how did they do it, but typically it's right. to, to what do us part be to what? Right, to so death do us part. Amen, amen. To death do us part. And <clears throat> though back in the day they did not have phones like we have now, you know, so she couldn't call them like hey, Sam, you know. <laughs> You know, asking the family where to you at? Where you at? But she knew right. where he. She, I'm sure she knew where he was. And if she not, didn't know exactly where he was, she knew how to access his parents. Like, I, I'm right. just sure she knew where to go. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? The Bible really doesn't talk right, to right. too much about her. It doesn't say, "Hey, she went down," you know, and spent the night with Samson family, or you know, ate chicken, or just whatever. But right. I would just only assume that she would know how to locate him. And it was as if it, right. it was it, to me, that's just me, you guys, what I'm thinking. I don't know. B mm -hmm. may even have something different. But I'm just like, she had to have known how to locate him or just at least set out to try to find him. And so yeah. I could just see where, you know, where where she, I don't know how to say, I'm just gonna say it really wasn't loyal. Because mm -hmm. she, she allowed the concubine to come in and to step in the place that Samson was in. And though Samson got upset, he got angry, you know, then, then right. he, said he, burned, he burned you with anger. So that, that, that to yeah. burn with anger, to me, that's a whole different level of anger. That's like the top level of right. anger. You got anger and then you got right. burning anger. So he burned you with right. anger. Like when you when you really think about that, that's something really deep. Cause when something burns, it's like ah, you know. So it's like he just he burned with anger. He furious. was furious. furious. Yes, he was furious. He was furious. And so then yeah. he, he left. He left. But does that mean that okay? If my husband and I get into an argument and he he leaves and he's angry, does that gives me the right to go sneak in my room and go and text? Jonathan, does that give me a right to go, you know, go on private dates behind my husband's back? Right. Does that give me a right to fool around with some, like we don't fight fire with fire. And I mean, personally, right. I think that it just would have been more appropriate for her to say, okay, well, you know what? I said, I do. This was, there was no gun to my mm -hmm. head. This was not forced, but I said that right, I do. Right, right, right. So I do is owe so much respect. That I do is yeah. old respect because I spoke that. Yeah. So if, if I disrespect that I do, then I disrespect myself because it came out of my mouth. That was deep. Oh, right. God Almighty. But That's deep. I've disrespected my own words now. I 
have disrespected me mm -hmm. because I said I do. And so I don't know. Yeah. I'm just looking at it different. And B, you may have something totally different that God gives you. But I'm just like, you know, I just feel as if she should have been more patient. And I don't know how long she waited. It could have been 30 years. I don't yeah. know. But if she never received word, and I'm sure she would have known because she didn't have the type of husband that was just a hidden husband. This was Samuel. Right. He was the right. ruler over the Israelites. This was Samuel. Right. He was right. hated by the Philistines. Like, you know, they, they, they hated him. They despised him. This is somebody right. that cannot be hidden. So to me, you right. would have received some type of word if your husband would have died. Because right. it really would have been celebrated by, by some of the Philistines. Exactly. What, what you got out of that, B? Did you have anything? That's true. That's true. No, I, I felt the same way. I felt like, you know, I, like I said, like we said, we don't know how long it was that he that he left, you know, and had, you know, got upset or whatever. But as being the wife and how I thought about it was like, he saved your life. Yes. Like if he wouldn't have gave you the answer to the riddle in the first place, you and your parents would have been burnt up. Because mm. that's what they said they were going to do to you. Yeah, but he today. cared enough for you to give you the riddle, which put him in a position that he had to then go back and cast on a debt that he would have never had to cash on because they would have never mm. knew the answer. So he cared enough for you, number one, to yes. give you the answer. You, because he didn't know what you wanted the answer for. He just thought that you, you wanted to know the answer because you didn't know it. You wanted to be the one to know the answer because they don't nobody know it. That's what he probably thought. Because mm. I'm pretty sure if he knew that you were going to give it to them, which would put him in a position where he had to go out and kill to, to pay them back, he would have mm -hmm. never gave it to you. So I was thinking like, this man then, 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 then sacrificed his life, number one, because you know he, he, even though he was powerful and you know he defeated them, you know, it, it could have gone another way. He still was at war. These 30 men he had to kill. You don't know how he killed them. You don't know what happened. You just know that he brought you 30 garments back to pay his debt. So I was kind of like, dog, you know, she was kind of insensitive to the fact that this man saved your life. And then me thinking that they he, she moved on so fast. Like, you couldn't even say, like, okay, send a, send a messenger down to the father's house and like, hey, What's going on with Simpson? Mm -hmm. Is he alive? Is he dead before your parent decides to send you off to somebody else? Mm -hmm. Like, like you ain't had no conversation at all with, mm -hmm. with nobody on his side to see if he was dead or alive or if he was okay. So I'm like, <laughs> that's how y'all me thinking, I'm like, okay, that's how y'all do it down here? Like, y'all do? That's how y'all do it? And then, and when you think but about, I, I that think being, that. What, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you. When you think about that, B, what she did was so dangerous. What she did could have cost her her life. Like it back in biblical mm -hmm. days, and, 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 and it should be now also, but back in biblical days, like <laughs> cheating on your husband because that's pretty much what it was. Because she was still, and right. like when we were studying, you said that 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 her um, her marriage with him was null and void because she was already married, so it really wasn't even a marriage, right. you know. So right, it, but, it really was a false marriage because she because yeah. the the man that she married before he didn't die, yeah, and that's the I mean that was the only way that that you would move on. Like if you read the stories that we read before, what are the stories about? What what happens when the when the husbands die? They go to the, the wives go to the brothers or the whoever else, the closest relatives to, to try to produce and to make, you know, family. So Samson yeah, didn't die. About that. That's good. So he was still your husband. You just got you two, got you two husbands now? Yes. Yes. But when you think about it, how do we expect her to follow the order when she's a Philistine? You know? So that shows me That's that we true. have to be careful even That's though true. The they, God, they, they, they didn't have an order no and even though the Ooh, word of God good. Said, that's good right there that's good yeah and even even though here in this story in the word it says that God that it was that 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 God pretty much arranged this he needed this to happen 
Now, it doesn't mm-hmm. say the events <laughs> that took place, God wanted right? these things to right? happen. But right? it does say, be- I can just kind of see where God maybe was trying, because God's thoughts are not his thoughts, his ways are not my, his ways, I mean, my ways, or my thoughts and my way. You know what I'm trying to say. Let me right. get that right. God's thoughts are not my thoughts, and God's ways are not my ways. Right. Okay? His ways are higher than mine. His thoughts are higher than mine. Right. And so, but I can only imagine that God may have wanted Samson to marry her, but then just kind of get in there. You know what I'm saying? That's, and and that's what I was thinking too, okay? Like, like that private detective work, you know, that kind of thing. Like, yes, I'm so far yes. the scene first, kind of yes. thing. And it, it puts me in the mind of who is that? Joshua and the spies. Yes. Like the, 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 you know, we read about Rahab and the spies and stuff. And you know how they kind of just went in and they they just kind of scoped the land. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and I could just kind of see where maybe that's what God had wanted to do. But then he got out there being, you know, Samson. And right. he said, okay, well, you know what? Let, let, let's play a couple of games. Right. Let's go ahead and play a couple of games. Right. And then these games kind of backfired on him. Right. Because it cost him 30 outfits. Right. Like, it, it's something about that linen i don't know i haven't researched this b and maybe mm-hmm. you have but was that linen was it was it really ex- you know kind of expensive like i said i had research and i know linen nowadays you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. okay but do you think that was yeah. kind of like a, a silk yeah, it, it, it was because if you think about it if you think about it it took them so long just to make one piece of garment. That's why if you, you know, research, they sometimes wore the same thing. Yeah. Like, in, in, like they always, like they probably had like two outfits, uh, everyday outfit and a good <laughs> outfit because it, <laughs> it took so long to make. And then it was, it was a situation where everybody wasn't privy to the fabric. Mm. You have to, you have to have this certain caliber or, or standard for, to get the fabric. Oh, oh, it, it, so and so that's why it took so long because it kind of like you know it, depending on what position you were in life and what you really had you know you you probably had a one outfit or you might have you know 10 15 outfits and that show your status too hmm. your garment showed your status so that's why when we when he was saying 30 linen garments and 30 outfits that's why it got real, real quick, because if it was easy to come by, and you think about it, if it was easy to come by, if if I could easily get 30 linen garments or 30 outfits, I ain't going to be pressing nobody, wife, nobody to kill them and blow and, you know, and burn their people up just because just I lose a bet. If, if, mm-hmm. if, the, if the, the prize or the, 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 the whatever it was was easy to come by. But it, you see that it wasn't easy to come by because it got real. Like that's like I'm not finna, I'm not finna do it. Mm-hmm. I ain't finna lose. So I need you to tell me the answer because I can't lose. Cause I can't produce these linen garments. Thirty of them in that, at that, I can't do it. So yes, I think that it was like, you know, something where it was like <laughs> next to impossible for them to get it. Mm. You know, and 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 then that's why it was so. Like that particular moment, that's why they didn't want to lose because it's like, okay, how are we gonna get this stuff? How are we gonna get thirty? <laughs> like thirty? I don't think you said one just for you. You still have thirty pieces. Six. I probably ain't even got. We probably ain't even got thirty pieces together. We probably just got this one outfit we got on today. Mm. You know, you want thirty? You know what I'm saying? So I think, yeah. I think I think you know with with the linen in in that it was kind of it was kind of hard to come by, you know. Yeah. Just reading, just reading up, you know, it was it was hard to come by. And you know what else? Be this shows me how much faith Samson had in God, because and how do we know that? We know that because it doesn't say Samson went in his closet and got the thirty garments. Right. It says that Samson went. To went down to Ashkelon, Ashkelon and struck down thirty of their men. So he struck them down. He, you know, put the whammy on them right. and went and took their clothes. So what does this tell me? That tells me that he knew 
He had so much faith in God. He knew that they weren't going to be able to, 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 to solve. Overtake him, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to do that either, but to solve the riddle. It's like, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, yeah. And so. He because, didn't, because, because, you because you think about it, he didn't have it. He didn't have the 30 minutes either. And, and, and when he, 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 he just was confident that he that they weren't gonna solve it, so he wouldn't need yes. to, to go get the thirty minutes. He he wasn't worried about where he was gonna get it from because mm -hmm. in his mind this rule this rule is so good and, mm -hmm. and it's so strong. You know, they ain't gonna they ain't gonna they ain't gonna figure this out, and they wouldn't have. If, yes, if he wouldn't have, you know, told the answer to his wife. So technically, you know, he was right, but then he was wrong. Yes, and, and and it just shows the love that he had for his wife. Because right, and, and then it goes back to because of that said love, you would think that she loved them equally enough to be concerned about his whereabouts. Like you know, you know, if 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 you miss it for this long, I'm gonna come see you where you at. Yeah, we ain't got we ain't got phones, and I may not be able to walk the city by myself. Being that I'm a female, yeah, I don't know how they were doing it back in the days. But I would have been sent a messenger, yeah, to kind of figure out where where you are and what's going yeah. on, especially before I move on to yeah. um another man, you know, or, or another another husband or whatever. And and even in that, the guy was telling me about that. You have to be. That's why you have to be careful too with. You know how he says, um, it brings me back to being equally yoked. Equally yoked doesn't necessarily mean, um, doesn't just always mean like you and the same, you, you and the person on the same page. But for this, for this particular equally yoked, what God was giving me is that that's why, it's, that's why you can't be married outside of, of, of <laughs> outside of your house, outside of, you know, just like a Christian marrying a non-Christian, or you know, you you gotta you gotta stay within your <laughs> stay within the family. Hmm. You know, because when you go outside of the family, then you 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 let loose a whole new everything. Because if she was if she had the same faith and same morals as he did, and believed in the same God, I would think she would have an honor about her husband or honor about the marriage or she would take it more seriously because I didn't think she took it serious for her to move on like that or for her to even let her dad give her to somebody like that I didn't think mm -hmm. that she I didn't feel that she took the marriage seriously and mm -hmm. you know I fought Samuel for seeing something that he wanted and he just had to have her you know <laughs> I gotta have her you know and, and I, I, I fought him in that too because you know that's when you when you get intertwined with something that's not of your caliber or, or that doesn't that doesn't believe or that doesn't um come from you. You know how even in the Bible it says how um God took a rib from Adam to make Eve. When somebody is not of you and not made for you, then you, you run into the problem of them not identifying with you at all. Yeah. I just felt like even in that she didn't even know who she married because if she, mm -hmm. if she knew who she married then she would know, know the power that he had and that if he chose her he would come back from her because of his strength and his power and who God made him to be he just he just made good on the debt mm -hmm. so you would, you would know he would come back for you yeah you know what I'm saying? he just made yeah. good on a debt that you called you because right. you, 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 you know she would feel like okay he 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 saved me because he paid his debt so he would come back for me but you know that just goes with you marrying people you ain't supposed to marry mm -hmm. but let's get to 15 really quick so we can kind of get to the end of this little fiasco so um it said that that she married that she married a um um uh, married a companion somebody's from a, who attended the wedding and ain't that something you married somebody that attended the wedding that's a that's a whole nother you know whole other thing you know <laughs> whole other thing snakes. had a couple of snakes right, in the grass right right mm. 
But mm-hmm. verse 15 says later on, at the time of wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. He said, I'm going to my wife's room, but her father would not let him go in. Mm-hmm. Verse 2, I was so sure you throw out <laughs> I was so sure you threw you thoroughly hated her, hated her, he said, that I gave her to your friend. Ooh. And he said, Isn't her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. So Samson decides to return back, return back, and he wants to pay a visit to his wife. When he gets to his wife's house, um, the dad stops him at the door and basically like <laughs> Where you going? Like, what, nah. like what, where you going, player? Like, what, where, where you going? And so, since like, I'm going, I'm going to my wife's room. Like, I miss my wife. I'm going to see my wife. And so mm-hmm. he tells the dad tells him that he thought that you know because he was gone for however long he was gone. Yeah. He tells him that he thought that she he he just threw her away. He didn't want her anymore. He hated her. He, he thought that because Samson was gone for so long, he thought that since Samson left in anger, little bit left in anger and was gone for that long, that he surely hated his wife and um, that basically he probably wasn't going to return. And so what did he do? It says, I gave her to your friend. And she said, isn't the younger sister more attractive? Meaning that, yeah, I didn't gave her away and she was your wife, but I got, I got, another, I got, I got another daughter. Like uh-huh. you don't want her? Like you don't want her? Uh-huh. And so verse three, Samson said to them, this time I have right, I have a right to get even with the Philistines. Uh-huh. I will really harm them. Verse four. So he went out and caught 300 foxes, 300 foxes and tied them Tail to tail in mm-hmm. pairs in two. So we took two foxes, put their tails together, tied them, tied them together. Mm-hmm. He says, and then it says, he then fastened a torch to every pair of tails. So after tying the two foxes together, 300 foxes, he paired them by twos, tied their tails together. After tying their tails together, he set a match, a light to their tail. So now you've got 300 Foxes who tails are on fire. Mm. Let me give you. I'm giving you. I'm trying to give you the visual. You got 300 foxes that that are paired by twos, and their tails are on fire. So instead, he uh, okay. So he went out here. He, he fastened. Then he he fastened a torch to every pair of tails. Verse five. Lit the torches and let the foxes loose. And the standing grain of the Philistines. So he let the after he burnt the after he set the tails on fire. He then let them loose to run wild in the um the fields of where the Philistines' harvest is, where their food is, where their crops is, for where they, where they grow their stuff. He set it. He set them wild. So basically, what he did was. That he made them destroy everything that they had, all of their crops, all of the harvest that they worked hard for. He set the foxes up <laughs> to destroy everything. Mm-hmm. It says he burned up, he burned up the shocks and standing grain together with the vineyards and olive groves. That was the good stuff. That's the good stuff. The vineyards and the olive groves. That's the top of the line crop. Verse six. It says, when the Philistines asked, who did this? They were mm-hmm. told, Samson, the Timnite son-in-law, because his wife was given to his friend. So the Philistines went up and burned her and her father to death. So let's back up. So after he set the, after he, he did it, after he set the foxes, Oh, you know, set them, set the tails on fire, let them run, and you know, destroy the crops and grains. Philistines see what's happening, or see what has what has happened, and they're furious themselves. They're like, "Who did this?" And they were told the Timnite 
son-in-law. Mm-hmm. And they basically, they, but they told them in telling them that the Timnite son-in-law did this because the father gave the daughter to a friend of his. They don't care about that at that point. They don't, they don't, want, to, they don't want to hear the reason why they did it. Yeah. They, they don't care about no reason. You know, they just want to know who did it. So what do they do in return? They go to the wife's house. I'm assuming they go to the house. They may brought they may have brought her to them, but I'm assuming how many vision this they may have. So they go find the wife who who stays with the with the dad, as we know, because Samson just recently tried to come and pull up on them and the dad is stopping at the door like you can't go into the room. So I'm assuming they stay together. So the Philistines go to the house and what do they do? They burn the wife up and the father. So both of them are dead. Samson's wife and the father is now dead. They did. So I'm gonna read a couple more. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read a little bit more so y'all can get get this little get this little key because this is this is good. It's good. So uh, this is um, okay. So verse seven says Samson said to them, since you acted like this. I won't stop until I get my revenge on you. So now they done made Samson mad. Hmm. Again. Again. And you would think that they really know that he probably, you know, a vengeful type person. Mm-hmm. Because of him him unleashing the foxes. You would think that they would know that he ain't nothing to play with. But I'm assuming that they don't know. So Samson t- tells them after the wife and the father is found dead, or he probably gets the news that they're dead. He tells them in verse 7, uh, since you acted like this, I won't stop until I get revenge on you. So basically, since you did this to my wife and her daddy, I, I ain't finna stop till I kill everybody. Every, everybody must die. Everybody's about to die. I ain't gonna stop till I get revenge. I am gonna, I'm not gonna stop until I get revenge on you. It's oh. verse 8. He attacked them viciously and slaughtered many of them. Then he went down and slayed, and he went down and stayed in a cave in the rock of Edom. Is that right, Kate? E- Edom. Mm-hmm. Edom. Verse 9, the Philistines went up and camped in Judah, spreading out near Leah. Verse 10, the men of Judah asked, why have you come to fight us? We have, came, we have come to take Samuel, Samson's uh, prisoner. They answered, to do to him as he did to us. Verse 11, I want to stop y'all, but I want y'all to get this. Verse 11 says, then 3,000 men from Judah went down to the cave in the rock of Edom and said to Samson, don't you realize that the Philistines are rulers over us? What have you done to us? He answered, I merely did to them what they did to me. They mm-hmm. said to him, we come, we come, we come to tie you up and to hand you over to the Philistines, Samson said. Samson said, swear to me that you will not kill me yourself. They agreed. They answered, we will tie you up. We will only tie you up and hand you over to them. We will not kill you. So they bound him up. Mm-hmm. When they bound him with two, with two new ropes, <laughs> two new ropes, and, tie, and led him up from the rock. As he approached Leah, as he approached Le- Leah, the Philistines came towards him, shouting, "The spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. The rope on his arm became like <laughs> became like charred flesh, and the bindings dropped from his hands. Finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey." He grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. Hmm. A thousand men. Then Samson says with the donkey jawbone, I have I have made donkeys of them. With a donkey, donkey jawbone, I have killed a thousand men. When he finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone and he and threw away the jawbone, and the place was called uh Ramath Leah. Because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord. 
You have given your servant a great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God opened up a hollow place in Leah, and water came out of it. When Samson drank, his strength returned, and he revived. So the spring was called, uh, I'm messing up, okay, in, in, ha, in Hakor, in Hakor, and it is still in Lehi. Verse 20, Samson led Israel for 20, for 20 years in the days of the sun. So that was an, I, I didn't really mean to read the whole thing, but I didn't want to leave y'all. I, like I, my spirit just said, don't, don't leave them like that. Tell them how he, you know, got the victory. So this was, this was good. Okay, I know you got some on it. This was good. After, after, basically he did what he said he was going to do. After, after he realized that they had killed the wife and killed the dad, he told them that he's not going to stop until vision is, he can get his payback. That's basically what he said. He ain't going to stop until he killed them. And that's a that's that's, that's exactly what he did. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what he did. What you write on that, Kay? Because that was good. I'm just flabbergasted. I, I, that I'm, was good. That was that was that was good, but it was bad. Oof. Beyond be honest, I think I'm still over here trying to figure out how he got these foxes. <laughs> I mean, we said you. It was a lot that was said after that, but I'm still stuck on that. And, and when I when I kind of sat there and I thought on that, I'm like, first of all, these are foxes. These are foxes. vicious animals. These are vicious animals. Yes. And then and it, it, it so quickly took me to Noah's Ark mm. and how God He's just so powerful that you know. It, I think it's in Revelation when it talks about. You know, everything has even the mountains, like the sun, the moon, the stars, everything must bow to God. Like yeah. everything, he created everything. So everything has to bow to God. Yeah. And it just took me to uh you know, Genesis when it talked about the one, when it talked about the creation of the world and and, and how the animals, God using his power, commanded the animals to pair up. And to go into one place, go into the ark, and just the patience, and just um, what is that? The, the the temperance and everything that these animals had, and how Noah had so much authority over these animals. It just took me to that moment, and it yeah. had me thinking, God. Did you do that same Noah thing that you did with Noah? Like, did you do that with Samson? So, I mean, because these are vicious, or was it just the, the, the power on him was so mighty and so strong, of course, from God that he commanded, <laughs> he commanded the foxes. Yeah. And they stayed yeah. still. These are vicious animals. Yeah. And then he set the tail on fire. And it could oh it, it makes me like understand more of why the Philistines got upset because one, not only have you destroyed our crop, mm-hmm. not only have you destroyed our land, not only you you tore down our little gates and stuff, the little stuff that we didn't built up, because these these foxes have gone wild, but also these foxes are vicious. So they can get up all of our animals. We got pigs, so you know, we got cows and cattle and all this stuff that they bite marks gone. Right. <laughs> so they didn't just ruin, but they also took their food. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> their food because these, right. I'm sure these foxes killed the animals. I'm sure they fought against them. They was confused. Like when they got out of that, that whatever that was, that I don't know what God put these animals in, but once they kind of got out of that and they went back into the world, it was as if, you know, I, I don't know how I'm saying this, but it was as if God just had so much dominion and authority. But it was like after after Samson pretty much lit that lit their tails and commanded, you know, them to do what it is that that thus says the Lord that God right. intended. For them to do right. it's like they snapped out of it i could just yeah. see oh god oh father it just shows me how amazing god is because i can visualize the animal oh god hallelujah jesus i can visualize these foxes be pairing yeah. up themselves standing in a, at attention 
standing in place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Into Noah's art, I'm sure they did the same thing. It wasn't no fight. Now, typically, you think about that. Be when animals. I don't. I'm just all in Noah's business. But when animals, when they are, when they start. I don't want to say habitat. When they start coing, is something a word I'm trying to say? But when they get together, I just say that it's like they got beef. You know, right. they got beef. Right. right, of course, of course. They got beef. You put right. too many, you know, too many women in the room. Typically, that's what happens. But these right. animals, they typically they want to eat. They normally want to eat each other. But these right. talks, you can show it's just so amazing how powerful God is. God mm. Almighty. I just didn't want us to miss that. These That's I could just see these foxes standing at attention and saying, okay, all right, I'm over here with you. You know, Baba Jean, I'm over here with you, Timothy. You know, right, you know, right. You know, and right. even though it may have been uncomfortable for them to get their tails tied up, they still didn't, re they didn't resist. Right. I can just see, I can visualize them not resisting. Because right. It was of God. It was a command. Oh God, hallelujah, Jesus. It was a command by God that yeah. they said. It was a command that their tails are be tied together and lit on fire. Mm. And then I'm thinking about and I say that because B, what are the chances? Because ain't nobody, nobody like you know how they have the the, the, the farming, I guess. If I can say that. What, what is that? What is that? A, a shepherd. Nobody's been a shepherd over these, um, or, or you know, just a, I don't know how, to, how, how right. what are they that's called? Right. They're not farmers. Are they farmers? Farmers. That's they, right. That's, that's farmers. right. They're, no, nobody. You trying to say that nobody? You nobody tend to them. Nobody was over right. over them. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. And the farmers out there watching foxes. Right. So what like, are who, the who, who been yeah. watch a fox? Can a fox gonna turn around and you don't you don't you're not friends with a fox. You're not friendly yeah. with the fox. The fox can turn on you and eat you at any moment. Yes. So I'm not gonna watch no fox. I don't know. I'm not gonna watch a fox. But they they is that no, there's okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm thinking of myself. Go ahead. <laughs> Because I was thinking about wolves. I was like, wait, it's something that, that run in packs, but those are wolves. Wolves, right. Yeah. Wow. But I can, I can almost see what you were saying, too. Like, because, like, like, it was almost like the animals was under the commandment of God. Yes. Like, yes. The, and, and then once they got done doing what they were set out to do, it was kind of like, I can, I can exactly. visualize it, too. Like, they just standing there. Like, wasn't it? <laughs> The fire is probably what caused them to snap out of it. The right. fire on their tails. Gosh, that's that's awesome. Baby. And then so, and then you think about it, you think about it too, real quick. You think about mm -hmm. you think about what caused you know, in the beginning. It said that you know God was setting up a, a, a basically a situation to where you know that where Samson would ultimately um, defeat the Philistines, right? But mm -hmm. you think about it, um, something had to take place for him yeah. to have that burning anger mm. to be like, I'm gonna kill all y'all. Mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna set this thing in motion, and and what happened? Mm -hmm. the, the wife and the father gets burned to death and he tells them this time I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get on y'all this, this, this is the time that God was talking about this is the time this is the time that I've been set aside for now I'm about to do what I was born to do what I was birthed to do and then he, even him he thought that and it, isn't it funny that he thought that once he did what God commanded him to do it, or that what he was raised to do. It's like I didn't did it now. Let me die. <laughs> I didn't did it. I'm thirsty. Just let me die like this. Let me die first. I'm, I'm done. And God, like, no, I'm gonna open up the screen. Um, you about to get your water. You about to get revived. And you about to rule for twenty years. It ain't over. It ain't over yet. And 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 that's and and you think about God is just that good. Mm. He's just that good to just when you think that. Oh, that's good. Just when you think that you know how you be praying for something, 
I'm, I'm speaking about myself. You know, you be praying for something, and then God exceeds your expectation. You praying for a certain type of position, and God puts you over the people who make the position. Yes. You put you praying for a certain type of, of of house or a certain type of car, yes. and God gives you something that you be like, what am I supposed to do with all this car and all this? <laughs> in, in, in that, <laughs> and that you are you praying for a two bedroom. You know, you got one bedroom right now. You praying for a two bedroom apartment. You ain't trying to be big. You you just trying to elevate a little bit. And you look and you look and you got approved for you a five six bedroom house. Come on. That's the God that we serve. That even Ooh. even when he even when we think of something and when we pray or so, pray for something he does exceedingly and abundantly that's what he that's what that means exceedingly and he, he was fine with dying because yeah. let him tell that his mission was fulfilled he was uh-huh. fine with dying after he killed them thousand men with that jawbone mission fulfilled i'm gonna die i'm gonna i'm gonna die in peace right now because i didn't kill mm-hmm. a th- thousand men with a jawbone and it's what God told me to do. I'm, I'm, mm. I can die part out. I can, I can, I can, I can rest in peace because I'm yeah. done. Now, and now, now, like, now. Nah. I, 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 I didn't make you defeat them and conquer, and conquer them just to die. You've been a rule for them about. You've been a rule for twenty years. You've been you've been to get a you you've been to get a glimpse of this blessing. You've been to get a glimpse of this atmosphere, and and that's just so good. That's what got me. I don't know if you was even thinking about that, but that's what got me. The fact that Samson was like, you know, I'm good. Like I'm, you know, let me go ahead and die. I'm thirsty. I'm tired. I didn't kill all these men. <laughs> but you know I'm what? Going to die. I know. I looked at it just a little different. I didn't look at it as if he was saying, like, I'm ready, to, you know, like I'm going to I looked at it as if he was saying, now you'll cause me, God, to do all of this. Because it says that he cried out to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Have, it, cause that cry out means that you needed something. You ain't crying if you don't need something. You know what I'm saying? You crying for a reason. Yeah, you for a reason. Right. So it's, he cried out to the Lord. And that's verse 18, you guys. And it says that. You have given your servant this great victory. Must I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? That's how right. the NIV. So it. So I looked at that as if like, God, man, wait, listen. I just, you know, you just use me for all of this greatness. Right. I'm about to die for thirst. But look at, <laughs> look at what God does. He says, you know what? Open up the stream, girl. Opened it. And you know what that opened up? Opened up the hollow place. Mm, Look, that'll preach right there. That'll preach right there. That that little 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 one look, that little one look. Oh, he opened up the hollow place. The hollow. The place that was closed up. The place that, Mm. ooh. Mm. He opened it so up. It was, it was always there. Huh. It was always he just opened it up. But he had to cry out. Because God oh. knew he was thirsty. It's not that God didn't know he was thirsty, because God knew he knows the needs. He knows our needs. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. God knows our needs, but he still wants us to cry out to him. Right, right. To, to, to acknowledge him. him. And I think that he was just basically <laughs> waiting on him to know that. To, to be reminded that he knew where his help comes from. He knew where his power came from. Because you didn't you didn't defeat all these men. Mm. You know, and, 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 and even if you know he was the cocky type who didn't reverence God, he was about, let me go find me some water because I'm thirsty. Yes. Like, I be, let me go find me some water because I'm thirsty. Mm-hmm. But he knew where his help comes from. He knew who sent him on the on the mission. He knew what he was doing it for. Mm-hmm. So in his weakest moment, he cried out. Oh, yeah. God, you gonna you gonna you gonna let me die like this? And I can see where I can see I can see that that uh where you get that from too, because I got you know the fact that he, he was ready to die. But I can see where you got like he uh, you gonna let me die like this? After, after doing all this for me, giving me all this power, you know, giving me this good victory, I'm go- you mean tell me I'm going to die a thirst right here? 
You know, and, and God, and it said God opened up the hollow place. And even, even when it said he opened up, they said that he was revived and his strength returned. That's so good there. That'll, that'll, that'll just preach right there on his own. His strength was returned mm -hmm. and he was revived. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. God mm -hmm. is so good. That was some anointed water. Good. That water was anointed. I'm trying to get me a cup of that water. I need me some what? of that. <laughs> what, what, what? Where, 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 is, where is this again? <laughs> That's awesome. Can we, but you can know we take that? a field trip? That just shows me that God will provide all of our needs. He'll supply yes. all of our needs his riches and glories. God owns all the water. <laughs> Okay, let's yes, just go ahead. Girl. So he can bring water to anything because any is, situation, water. yes. He is the is his water. Yes. So he, he, he is the water. In anywhere. God can can cause my wall to, to produce a spring. Yes. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. It's nothing but trees back here. But he can still cause a spring to come down from heaven. Yes, yes. And give me exactly what I need. I think that it's, it, it, I know the entanglement is the entanglements of a weeping woman, hallelujah, Jesus, and, and, and God is so good because it shows me that, what did Samson do? He cried out to God. It's right there. It's right here in verse 18 because he was very thirsty. He cried out to God. What I think God wants us to see is that <laughs> He wants us to be weeping women. He wants us to mourn right for him. He wants right us out. to cry out for him. And I think that this is, this is a great, the, the way that God has allowed us to chop it up, of course, because we know that this Philistine woman who doesn't believe in our God, who believes in idol God, that this Philistine woman, she cried out to, Sam, to Samson. Yeah. Okay? So she, she cried out to Samson. But right. I think that, such a great representation of how God wants our heart posture to be towards him. Yes, so it's no coincidence be that before we got on the line, God gave us the entanglements of a weeping woman. Because right. it's, so, it's, so, it's so perfect for what he showed us in this. Is that God wants us to, to be weeping woman. He wants us to, 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 to cry out, to mourn. For him mm, that's so good okay that's good how when you weep for something you feel like it's something that you need when you yes. cry because you need it it's like i need yes. it i'm crying about it because i need it Woo. so i that's I so think good God wants us to to cry out for him and i don't want to mess this up or must have anyone to mistake this this crying and this level of weeping that we're talking about Though the Philistine, though this wife, this Philistine woman, uh, Samuel's, uh, Samson's wife, mm -hmm. forgive me if I've been saying Samuel, you guys, because I mix them up. Um, <laughs> I know them, but I still say Samuel means Samson sometimes because their names are kind of close. But I could just, just, I could just see, see the enemy try to throw me off with that because I lost my train of thought. But I could just see just God and, and, and just him wanting us to have this heart posture for him. To cry yes. out to him. Yes. To cry out for him. It's just something about that cry. When the mm -hmm. Israelites will cry out to God, he'll hear he them. Heard them. The, yes. Yes. The cry that we're talking about, you guys, it's not tears. So don't think that it's, it, it's that cry like, oh, my face just, I got a snotty nose in my face. It's the heart behind it. So when yeah. the Israelites cried out to God, God is a spiritual being. This is my, this is what I'm thinking now, okay? I'm no Bible scholar, but this is just what I'm getting out of it. It's just that God, he know, he, 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 he hears the cries of us. It's the heart. It's the heart that of us. It's our heart that God searches out. Yeah. Okay? That's scripture. He searches out our heart. So are you weeping from the heart? Is it, is it, is your heart yes, with the tears that are presented on your face? Is your heart crying out for me? I mean, you, <laughs> you, can, cry, you, can, you can weep. You can, you, you, you remember back in the day, I'm sure, I'm sure you've been guilty of it before when you did that little lick, you're trying to cry for your parents, you do that little lick and go like that. 
trying to, uh, maybe you haven't, maybe I'm extreme, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to do a pretend cry or something like that because you want something. So you may even go and get a little bit of water and splash it. I know somebody <laughs> is like, I know it's not just me, okay? But if it is, we're going to keep me in prayer, all right? But yeah, and I've done that before, B. But God, he doesn't, those are the cries that get his attention. <laughs> It's when it's when he can hear your it's it's desperate, your desperate, the it's desperate the cries. Yes, them desperate yes. cries. What you talking about? Them desperate ones. Yes, and I don't think that Samson was in. I don't think that he was got up out of that battle and and just started crying with a face full. I think it was more so like a a spiritual cry out to God. Yeah, he cried out to him from his spirit, from yeah. his soul, from the innermost yeah. part of him. Yeah. Okay, B. I'm sorry. I'm that's good. Me. No, that's good. You so silly. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> that's so good. Because what I was getting from that when you were saying that God, um, that God wants us to to cry out for Him, He does. Because it just just think about it. You know, and He was giving me this as you were talking. You were talking about you as a child, but even. <laughs> Even when you were crying out, just think of your child crying out to you. Yeah. First of all, they want attention. Yeah. And they and they want your attention. And you know, and that's what I got from that. You know, God wants us to God want us to want him. He wants us to need him. He wants Jesus. us to know that he Jesus. can su supply our needs. So, Amen. When we are in that weeping, you know, crying out state. That's mm -hmm. all that's telling God. That's why he shows up. Because number one, your attention is not on maybe what you're going through, but you're crying out from a heart posture of saying, God, I need you. Like, yeah. show up. Help me, please. Like, in, in what you asking for help, you knowing that he's the only one that can help you. Maybe <laughs> you've reached a point to where you've done everything yourself or done everything on your own. It ain't working out. It hadn't been working out. So, he, so now you're crying out because you've exhausted your options, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of us think that a lot of us think that you know God sees that, and God like you know y'all go ahead on you know baby go, go on do it by yourself you did it by yourself go ahead God waits for the day of us to know that we need Him because He knows who He is 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 no is no. Um, second guessing his power, his anointing. He knows what he has, what he holds, but he wants us to know it. And he lives for the moment in the days that his children come to him and kneel at his feet and surrender all to him. God, I need you. God, I, I, I've done it all. I, can you please help me? Like I'm, I'm turning it over to you, God. Have your way in my life. Have your way in this situation. I'm leaving this at the altar. God lives for those moments. I just feel like his, his heart is filled in those moments because he wants to give us that rest. He wants to mend our hearts. He wants to help us. But if we're walking around like we got everything and we know what we're doing or whatever, whatever, he don't let us think we know what we're doing and he, gonna, he ain't going to bother us. Mm-hmm. But he lives for those moments where we surrender to him, where we cry out to him. Because in our cries is where he hears us and where he knows, okay, this is, this, we, I think we probably talked about it before, but I don't know about you, but when uh, Kyle and Papa was small, when my babies were small, they can be in a room full of babies crying. Mm -hmm. I know my babies cry. Mm -hmm. And even if they're crying, I know as a mother, you know what they cry for. They need to be changed, they need to be they're gassy, you know, yeah. they, they want to they want a hug, they want a kiss. They just yeah. call you, you know, you 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 know their cry. That's how in tune God is with us and how he wants to be with us. That's but true. we have to let him in. We have to let him in and we have to surrender all to him so that he can be in tune to know our cry like this. That's B. She needs me. And, and he, hold on. That's K. I, I hear K. I, I hear K. I hear she, she crying. She needs me. Hold on. You know, and he's a, he's, he, he, he's, he's a God that knows everything and that can be everywhere. But knows that when we cry out to him, 
he's coming. And I thank him for that. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for just for, for hearing my cries and coming to my aid. Mm. I thank God for that. That's good. I That's thank good. God for that. I just want to say real quick too, because uh, God is just so awesome. <laughs> He's so awesome. But <laughs> it just it, it like when you were saying you said the different cries, and so you know we've all you know as most most parents. <clears throat> Or either have been connected to someone that's a parent and they hear their baby crying and be like, oh, he don't want that. He don't want that. <laughs> that's why I say that it, it's, a, it's a heart posture. Yeah, I'm right. Because we can be crying boogers, you know? and But our heart is not from the heart. Right. It's, it's, it, it's not. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You're crying for the thing that you want, but not really the connect Ooh. come on I, I feel it I feel it mm -hmm. but come on, it has to do with God I don't I, 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 pray, I'm, I pray I say this right but it's like it's it's you're crying because of what you want from God yeah but you're not crying because you want God yeah that's it like you're and, and you know I, I, I can only imagine how those cries, Damn. they're still hurt, but it's one of those, girl, she don't want it. She <laughs> just cry. Oh, you know, like I said, oh. oh my God. But I could just only imagine that, that, that you're crying because, you know, you want something from me, but you're not crying for me. I, I don't know mm. if that makes sense to me. That makes, perfect, that makes that. perfect sense. Perfect sense. So you're not crying for the relationship, for the repairing of the relationship between you're, us. You're right. crying because for the you are, oh, hallelujah. You're crying for the relationship with the item that you want me the to benefit. The benefit. To you. The the benefit. benefit. You're crying the benefit for the, of the relationship. Which, which, which <laughs> Which, 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 if you, if you in my face and you crying for it, you have started idolizing it. And that's right. my command. That's one of my 10 commandments. You can, don't put nothing before me. Nothing comes before me. How can you come to me and you're crying, but you're not crying out for me. It's right. an idol, an object, a person, a place, mm. a thing. You, you crying out to me. But mm. it's not for me. Can you cry out to me for me? Like you crying out to me for approval on this house loan? <laughs> Can you cry out to me for me? Like you crying out for, uh, I, I don't know, a uh, sickness, a uh, healing from a sickness. Can you cry out to me like you're crying out about, you know, uh, uh, um, um, your husband to act right? Can you cry out to me like you crying for just whatever the case may be? A new car. Your car yes. You crying out about your car being raggedy, but are you crying out <laughs> for me? For me, right? Your bitch raggedy. Oh, oh. Are the raggedy Come relationship. On, Can you cry out to me for for the healing of this relationship? Yes. Like you're yes. Out to me yes. For the yes. Repairs of your car. I don't want to focus on the repairs of your car. I want to focus Ooh. on repairing our relationship right now. Yes, Kay. Oh God, that's for me. That but look. It's okay you, you to ask for things, but you need to fix the person. You need to fix the relationship, the connection. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. It reminds me of a power cord. It reminds me of a phone charger. We all had those phone chargers that uh that, that has a shortage in it. You got to twiddle it around. You got to move it a certain way. The connection is still connected, but you got to hold it in a certain position in order to get yeah, all of the juice, in order to get out of the electricity. God is saying, wait a minute. We, I mean, we need to repair this faulty cord. We need to Ooh. repair this connection. So that when you plug into me, you don't have to turn a certain way and you don't have to squiggle and you don't have to move and you don't, it'll just be a straight plug in and I'm the, we got to fix this relationship. You're trying to fix up a relationship with man and you're crying out for man, but you need to- but what about me? What about me? 
So I can only see, I can, I can just visualize that B. It's yes. just that, that's the morning God is saying. Yes, yes, yes. Pray that everyone has made that conscious that we talked about last week. And I don't know if God is going somewhere with this. Like, if, if, and I'm sure he is because God is awesome. And me, me and I, we don't, we don't get on the line, you guys. And we don't plan all these things. You know, and like we, we sometimes, and I'm going to just go ahead and be bold enough to say it. Sometimes God don't even cause me, me and I to study together. We just right. get on the line and the spirit of God shows up. It's right. nothing that we do. It's God. God. It's God. Thank and the you, way Jesus. we're able to interact so good is because of the connection of God. Yes. God. Connected to the she source. Can finish one, she, can, she can finish my sentence. I can finish her sentence because of the connection. Yes. That sometimes being I don't even we, we're so busy that sometimes we don't even get the opportunity to talk right but God God still shows up yes so God I say, I to say this on last week we talked and I said okay well we're gonna do a challenge and that challenge I pray everybody can remember it but it was pretty much to like just stay calm and you know just just, just to be a piece of be patient you know, like just, just to do these things, just, just be patient, be at peace, be calm. So I want to challenge everyone this week, this next week coming up, we'll talk about it next week. The challenge of this week is going to be, let's work on repairing our relationship with God. Let's get back plugged in, girl. Let's, let's, let's try to avoid, I know at times we feel like we can't, but let's try to avoid asking for extra things. Mm. And let's just make sure that we make a conscious effort in every prayer that we pray to ask God to reveal ways to us to repair our relationship with him. To remove anything that is sucking the, the energy yeah. out of us where we can't even get the full uh, amount of power from the power source that we're supposed to be plugged into. Ask mm -hmm. God to show us any false outlets that we're plugged into that is not a representation of God, that is not of God, that is not ordained by God. Mm -hmm. So I, would say, I think that that's so amazing, B. That just this week alone, you guys, let's ask God for him. Let's ask God for yes, our relationship with him. For more. Let's not, let's not go in, in, in our prayer closet. And we can still pray, of course. But let's not go only seeking things from God. But Ooh. let's make sure we include in every prayer that we pray. God, please, and even if you need to put a fast with it, even if you need to sow a seed to your congregation or just whatever the case may be, God, I want my relate. forgive me for anything Ooh. I've done to, to cause this disconnection in this core, connection together. Forgive me, Father God, for plugging into the wrong outlet, mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Just forgive me for, for anything that I've done and help me, God, to plug into you and not only plug in, but to stay plugged into you. Mm. So I'm asking you for you this week, God. Yes, God. I want you. It's not about cars. It's not about houses. It's not about clothes. It's about you. Because the, let me tell y'all, the best thing about God, the most amazing thing about him, it, it, I can't even say the most to make. It's just it's mind blowing, but the mm. most, it's so mind blowing. Mm. <laughs> but the most amazing thing about God is that he cares so much that he sent his son. Okay. Yeah. But one of the, one of the amazing things about God is that God loves us so much that when we focus on him, he takes care of us. Yes. Ooh. But when we focus, when we put our attention on God, oh God, God wants to love us. The Israelites. When they draw near to him, he took care of them. So it, it's not just about me. You know, God, God has a heart where it's not just about him. My goal is to take care of you. Yes, so God. When you focus on me, I take care of you because it's all yes. I want to do. That's I it. Just so close to you. Ooh, that's so good. Okay, that's so good. I don't want you to desire man. I don't want you to desire friends. I don't want you to put things before me. I just want you. 
That's it. And so I just think it's so amazing that all, and I'm talking to myself, you got that all God wants is us. Mm. So when we give, when we give ourselves to him, he provides for us. He just want to mm. take care of us. Can you imagine pushing away a good man, a man that just want to take care of you and your children, a man that wants to protect and cover you all, a man that just wants to be there to supply your every need. A man that you can seek and his and he and his and his answer is gay and amen. Thank you, Lord. Can you imagine that? Thank you. That's God. That's him. All he wants to do is take care of us. And I feel I feel so horrible because we push him away, we ignore him, we neglect him, we close the door in his face, we ignore him, we hurt him. We put people before him. We do a wrong. And all he wants to do is love us and take care of us. And I feel so ignorant. I just feel so ignorant to not, to not think of how amazing God is. To think of the love. He loves us so much. All he wants to do is take care of us. That's, That's all he wanted to do with the Israel was take care of them. That's it. So I just repent. I repent. And I just ask God for, to forgive me. And yeah. I'm going to make sure that I make a conscious effort this week, you guys, to just to just ask God for God. Ask more of him. I don't want to be knocking on his door asking for stuff that I could get if only I get him. If only I get him. I'm going to get it anyway. Okay, you hitting it, girl. God is good. You hitting I it. I just love him. I love him. He's so amazing. And I just, like I said, I just repent. And I just pray mm. that, you know, each of, each of you all would just repent. Just take some time to repent tonight. Yeah. Because yeah. all he want to do is take care of us. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Love us and take care of us. And I'm just so, I'm so apologetic. I just, yeah. I just repent. Cause I know I have made taking care of me hard for God. Ooh, I girl. know I have made that hard. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Amen. Oh God, we thank you. Oh, I don't have anything else. I'm just, I'm full. I'm full. I'm full because I feel the same way. I'm just, I'm just in, in a mode of where I'm just so apologetic. I'm so, you know, sorry for for the way I've treated God, if that makes sense. You know, if, if with all that he's done, you know, for me, and, and even with you just speaking about focus, girl, some stuff that I've been praying about, you know, uh, things, situations I've been praying about. And even today, you know, he let something happen for me today. Um, I got some good news on something today. And even in that, you know, I, I had to laugh when you said it because he spoke to my spirit as soon as I got the, the letter in the mail. He spoke to my spirit. He says, when you focus on me, hmm. I'll focus on you. That's it. That's it. Jesus. And, and that's how I knew. I oh. knew when you begin to talk about focus. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's it. That's what he wants for us tonight. That's, that's what he wants for us to relay and want for us to do the challenge of the week or just just realigning your life from this point on you know it doesn't matter what you did yesterday it doesn't matter you know what you did before you got on this line or before you heard whatever uh before you heard us tonight at this point repent repent from your sins turn away from any and everything that's not of God ask God to come into your life and to be your savior yes and live for him 
seek his word, spend intimate time with him, put no one and nothing before your relationship with him and watch how he blows your mind. Watch how he blows your mind. God is waiting on the opportunity. God is waiting to bless you. He's waiting on the opportunity to bless you. But he wants to know that when he bless you, that you're going to get, that you love him enough, that you're in the position with him enough, that you're, that you're close with him enough, that your relationship with him is solid enough, your connection is connected enough to where he'll get the glory. Yes. Out of your life. Mm. Because blessing you is easy. It, it, it's not going to hurt him at all. Blessing you is something that he wants to do. It's so and simple. He doesn't, he doesn't want it to be in vain. He doesn't want it to be in vain. He, he wants to bless you and he wants to have that relationship with you. You know, sometimes we treat, we treat God like a sugar daddy. Like he's we we supposed to get he's supposed to give and give and give and give and give and we just supposed to get and we're supposed to put that out like you know he's a sugar dad I hope he don't want no sugar you you know but God isn't like that and we and we do that all the time we treat God like that all the time as if this is a one way street and not an even exchange God said you give me you give me you I'll give you me. But it be, the exchange is far greater because you're giving him pieces. You're giving him leftovers. You're giving him incomplete. And he's wanting to, and he's in return giving you wholeness. In return, he's giving you fullness. In return, he's giving you health and wealth. He's giving you everything. But he, he, just, want, he just want a little bit of you for all of him. That's something you can't you can't ask for. You can't what 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 other God that you know of that will that that will sacrifice his son for you, knowing that you will sin again. Knowing mm. that you're not perfect. He sacrificed his son for you to pay for your sins, knowing that that will not be the last time you will sin. God is good. Yes. God is awesome. He's awesome. Give and me I, you because I have given you me. That's it. Give me you because I have given you me. My greatest, my greatest possession I've given you. Come without on. a second, without a second glance. And mm -hmm. all he wants is a time, intimacy. There you that's go. It. Come on. Yes. That's all he wants. You can't, you can't. And, and I just feel, I feel, you know, I just repent and I just pray to God I, and I thank him for not giving up on us, Kay. I, I just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. I thank him for not giving up on us time and time again as he chased us down. Because, you know, we, 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 we weren't worthy for all the stuff that he's giving us for the anointing. But we weren't worthy, but he yes. saw it, but, but he saw fit. Yes, and I Lord. thank him for that. I thank him. I thank him for that. Because even even when we feel unworthy, he sees us totally different in his eyes. And God, I just thank you, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, God. Oh God, I don't I don't we'll be here all night. I I, I don't God is amazing. Yeah. And I can I can I can feel the Holy Spirit. Yes. I can feel him. He's so good. He's so awesome. Focus. Focus on God this week. Refocus. Change your focus. If you were not focusing before, redirect your focus to God and watch. Just, just, just watch how he moves in your life. And, you know, sometimes we, we do things in hope that God would do something in return. But this week, don't expect nothing in return. Don't expect nothing in return. Don't don't make it an exchange. I don't know where this is coming from. My God is just basically saying that don't don't just just give just just give, just give not knowing what you're gonna get back. That's good. Just give yourself to Him, not knowing what He's gonna give you back for in return. 
but just know that whatever he gives you back is far greater than what you had before. That's all I had, Kay. That's all I got. God is good. God is good. He's awesome. He's awesome. Yes. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Well, B, I'm going to be honest. I'm done. Ooh. If you want to go ahead and pray. <laughs> Oh, we 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 got through it. We got through our um moment of the night. Yeah. You know, I don't even want to say that. I think that tonight is a night where we are the women of the night. Yeah. I don't I don't think that uh Samson's wife. I think that because I I think that tonight was about us. And God yeah. has shown us us. He's shown us how it's looked to, to cry out to the wrong person. He's shown, mm. us, he's just shown us so much in tonight. He's shown yeah. us how to cry out even after the battle, you know, how to, how, how to cry out, how to still need God, even after yeah. we've succeeded, e even after the success. Yeah. So you guys, once God gives us Ooh, God. You know, as far as desires, we still must maintain Don't our forget about him. Don't forget about him. for God. We still have got to. Don't so even under the houses, the cars, the clothes, the material things that we cannot take with us when we die. Even after he still blessed that, we, we still must cry out to him. Never forget about him. Because I tell you, as quick as he's built up, he can tear down. So... <laughs> As soon as God, we, yeah. we take away. So let's just make sure that we continue even after the victories. Yes, we God. Continue to cry out to God. That we continue to cry out. But that's all I got. Jesus, let's go before God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you on tonight, Lord God, for being who you are in our lives, Lord God. God, we just want to repent right now, Lord God, and ask for your forgiveness, Lord God. Yes, Lord we God. thank you, Lord God, for your patience with us, Lord God. We thank you for not giving up on us, Lord God. We thank you because there's nothing that we've done to deserve you, Lord God, to deserve your grace and your mercy that you give us each and every day, but yet you wake us up, Lord God, and you see fit to breathe your breath into us, Lord God, each and every day, and give us a second chance, Lord God, a second and a third chance, despite, Lord God, our failures, Lord God, despite our mishaps, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for entrusting us, Lord God, with your word. We thank you right now, God, for giving us, Lord God, and, and, and giving us your Holy Spirit. We thank you for leaving something behind, Lord God, that you loved us enough, Lord God, that when you departed, you said that you would give us something. You would leave us with something that will never leave us, Lord God. And we thank you right now for the presence of your Holy Spirit tonight, Lord God, on this call. God, we just ask right now, Lord God, that you forgive us for our sins, Lord God, those that we know of and that we don't know of, God. And we just ask right now that you allow your Holy Spirit to walk with us and guide us each and every day, Lord God, and allow us to get it right, Lord God. Whisper in our ear, Lord God, direct us and guide us, Lord God, as we try to serve you the best we know how, Lord God. Yes. I thank you right now, Lord God, that you're, re, you're, you're changing our focus, Lord God. And I pray right now that everyone that was listening to this call, Lord God, that they will begin, Lord God, that if they are unplugged from you, Lord God, they will plug back in. Yes. They will plug back in, Lord God, and they will get they will get with Simpson, God. They will get revived and they will get they will <laughs> their strength will return back to them, Lord God. The same way that you did, Samuel. God, I thank you right now, Lord God, that you're raising up some powerful women lord god but in order lord god for them to to be who you call them to be they have to stay focused lord god i'm reminded of when you asked peter to come out on the water lord god as long as he was looking at you as long as his eyes was focused on you lord god he walked on the water but the moment he began to look around at his circumstances lord god he begins to sink so right now, Lord God, despite what's going on in our lives, Lord God, allow us to focus on you, Lord God, to see you, Lord God, and to let you walk us through whatever it is that we're going through, Lord God. I thank you right now, Jesus, 
for your hand. I thank you, Lord, right now for your strength, Lord God. I thank you right now for your many blessings that you've given us, Lord God, that we do not deserve. God, continue to protect us, to keep us, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to watch over us, Lord God. Keep our families safe. Keep us safe. Protect our mind and our bodies and our spirits, Lord God, from all of the enemies' attacks, Lord God. And we do, and we do thank you, Lord God. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love you guys. Thank Amen. you guys. Love you. Y'all have a great night. Y'all have a great night. I'm going to